Good morning everybody. It has been a long time. It has been ages since I have done one of these Facebook live cooking classes here in my kitchen, but I have a really, really, really good excuse. So if you'd bear with me with my excuse, <laughs> the excuses that I have um, spent the last couple of weeks really deep, deep down inside my next cookbook, uh, which is due for release in November. Now that cookbook is Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, but it's more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So you guys all know about this one, right? Which is what we're gonna be cooking from today. So we're cooking from this one today, which is Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I have just finished, uh, like literally a day and a half ago, I finished shooting the very last photograph that is gonna go into the new book, which is more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Because remember this one here, this one is the gut reset. So if you, um, depending on what your health goals are, but if your health goals or your health journey includes um, wanting to lose weight, and you guys know that I lost 30 kilos in five and a half months using the recipes in this book. Um, if your health goals are to heal your gut, you also know that that's what this book is for. This is, the, this is where we start. This is like getting us used to um, eating without gluten, without sugar, without dairy, and very low in fat. And if you combine all those elements together, like we know, what that then means is that we begin to get really, really healthy, and the weight loss is kind of a side effect of being extremely healthy. So um, that's that book, as you guys all know, which is um, still available. In fact, we got our second shipment um, delivered to us about about two weeks ago so if you are wanting a copy of this you still have time to get a copy of this because we do have a new shipment that landed and you can go to bridgetscookbook.com and order your own copy of this book um, and we've got another big announcement to make to do with this book as well very very soon coming at you soon but um, yes the second cookbook that's why I've been sort of you know vague and haven't been around a lot and I haven't been spending a lot of time online because I literally have been like this focusing on getting the best new book delivered to you guys, more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, due out in November, which is in thank you, thank you for the congratulations. It's really exciting um, that we've moved on to the next book because people were saying to me, and for a long time, they love this book. They love this book. And don't forget, this book sold out in six weeks, the first shipment. So the fact that we've got the second shipment now, I'm really excited. Um, so this book they love, and they've, you know, and they've achieved some amazing health um, benefits from this book. So what's next? Because they want to continue on. So I give you over a hundred more new recipes, and that's why it's called More, the book. A hundred more new recipes. But this is the cool part, is that remember, this one was really about resetting your gut. So there was no desserts in this one. What's in the next one? Yep, there is a section on healthy treats. There is also um, a really good section for vegans, vegetarians as well. There are people, there's lots and lots and lots of really good quality protein recipes, of course. There's more of my fabulous sauces. So if you like the sauces from this book, there is even more of my fabulous sauces in the new book. There is great meals for families, but one of the really cool things that we have done, and we are one of the first cookbooks in the whole world to do this, is we have included the ability for you to be looking at a recipe, and then you'll be like, I'd really like to have more information about that. And you can scan a little code in here on the recipe page, and that will take you to a video that is um, either the video of me doing the recipe, which is really cool. You can just literally scan it on your phone, which will take you straight to the video. You can watch me making the recipe, or it might be a tip on shopping, or a tip on what the ingredient is, or something really, really cool that means so much to that recipe. So we've got over 50 um, different videos and you will have access to 50 of the videos that go into the next book as well to do with over 100 recipes. So how exciting is that? And uh, it, it's going to come to you guys before November. That's why I've been working really hard to get it out there and, um, and take all the photographs and make sure the recipes are amazing and beautiful and wonderful because I want to make sure I get this book to you guys before Christmas. So we're at this stage, we're looking at a um, late November arrival, but we will announce the pre-order um, pre um, for you guys. We'll We'll make a big announcement so you know when you can pre-order your copy as well. So exciting stuff, but we're here to do a cook the book, book masterclass. We're cooking straight from the book today, and we I have to say the recipe we're doing today is one of my personal favorites. I have this 
thing. <laughs> And it's, it, it even gets a little bit weird at times about, um, and I have this thing for, firstly I have this thing for jars. I'm constantly collecting jars. If I see a beautiful jar, I don't want to throw it away. I really struggle. Yes, it's the recycler in me, but I think more than that, it is the pickler in me. When I see jars like this, I'm like, oh, it needs pickles. <laughs> We're going to put something in this gorgeous jar, right? So, um... And it comes to pickles, and I will take, I will go back as far as my grandparents. Like my nanny was famous, and in, in her little area up north, um, in north 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 of New Zealand, for her pickles. She was world class famous. We still sit around, you know, all these years later, and reminisce about how good my nanny's pickles were. So I had my nanny and my dad's side, incredible pickle maker, and then on my mum's side there was my nana, who used to. She was come from a farming background, so the lot, you know, when there was um, a, a, a wealth of supply of vegetables and fruit, they always got pickled. So we're talking about pickled onions, we're talking about pickling different types of um, vegetables as well, but they were always pickling. So I think that pickling gene has kind of been handed down to me <laughs> because I love pickles, but not just I love making them. I also adore eating them because of what I've worked out, and this is all part of this health journey that I've been on for such, you know, I've been on for over a year and a half now. What I've worked out is that not only are pickles really, really good for our gut health, and we'll talk more about why they're so good for our gut health um, as we get into the recipe, but the other really incredible thing about pickles is that they um, taste absolutely phenomenal. So if you've got a jar of something delicious in your fridge, you have the ability to make something delicious just like that. So when you think about a pickle, um, they can be added to so many different things and the more I, I get involved with pickles and turn different things into really healthy, healthy prebiotic, probiotic pickles, what I realize is they have an affinity with lots and lots of different re recipes, lots and lots of different meals as well. So yes, you can put your pickles through a salad, that's a pretty obvious one, but you know having, a, having something pickled um, through a, a beautiful gut healing bowl, which is, you know those beautiful bowls I like to create with a bit of protein and there might be an egg in there or some avocado and then some pickles and then some salad and you're like you're never more than five minutes away from something delicious but the other thing I love about pickles is you just put uh, put it on the side of a hot protein like maybe it's some chicken or a little bit of fish or something like that and the thing that I have discovered recently which is so super exciting the thing that I have discovered recently is that pickles my pickles and curry uh, like a match made in heaven. So there's so many ways you can use your pickles and there's so many different types of pickles we can make of course and they are all really really easy to make. So the recipe that we're doing today, I'm going to give you guys actually a little bit of a teaser. Yes I'm cooking a recipe straight from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen and I believe it's on page 208 for anyone who's playing along at home. It's on page 200, oh, 218, I was, I was almost there, where I'm going to be showing you guys my pickled cucumbers. So we're going to be doing that recipe today, but that's why you need to hang around. As well as doing this recipe today, I'm also going to take you through two recipes that um, is go are going into the new cookbook, More from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So there are two more pickled recipes, because of course there's more pickled recipes in my new book, but even in this book. Um, and I'm just flicking through it going, wow, that's awesome. I was really onto something good here. So of course we've got our pickled cucumbers. On the very next page, we have this. Now, if you haven't tried this yet, and when zucchini is in season, it's pretty cheap in Australia at the moment. I'm not sure about where it, where it is, how it's priced in your part of the world, but it's, it's a fairly good price at the moment. So, quick zucchini pickles, they look like that. Ah, fabulous they're really 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 good so you could also do that sort of thing as well I've got my preserved lemons in here for when lemons are in season because remember when it comes to making pickles it's all about that produce being in season because then it's going to be heaps cheap and you get the quality product because it's right in the peak peak of its most amazingness 
And so when lemons are in season, this is a really nice one, and they will literally last for six or seven months. And it's the other thing about pickles, they last for ages. So you make them once, and then provided you don't scoff them all really quickly, which is what I do, you can actually have them sitting around and waiting for you for more than a couple of months in your fridge. So there's some great pickle recipes in there. There's even more, I like saying that, because it's more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen in the new book that's coming out in November. There's even more of my fabulous pickle recipes, but I'm going to take you through just a couple of those recipes today, right now, just so you can have, because you're here and you're watching, and I love you for, for sharing your Sunday morning or your Saturday with me, because you're doing that, I'm going to give you the recipe for those pickles, so you get a bit of an advance, advance notice as well. So, we're going to start with the original, right, which is my pickled cucumbers in the first book, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So I'm just going to bring the camera down so you guys can sort of see, see what's going on down here. So, um... Oh, let's get it all set up so you can actually see. Yes, you can see. Fantastic. So what I thought I would do um, to begin with is talk about what we're going to be pickling today. And as you can see here, I have this fabulous pedestal that I bought from the Salvation Army store, by the way. Isn't that amazing? I bought that from the Salvo. So this fabulous pedestal of, um, of um, little cucumbers, also known as continental cucumbers. No, sorry. That's incorrect. Continental cucumbers are the big... I'm getting confused. Small cucumbers. Lebanese cucumbers, we call them here in Australia. Now, these cucumbers, the reason I'm using these small ones is they tend to be just a little bit um, sweeter than their larger telegraph counterparts. So I do like the small ones. And if you can find these, these are definitely ideal for this type of, of pickle recipe that we're doing. One thing that I suggest that you do with your um, cucumber before we even start to use them is give them a bit of a wash, which I've already done. A little bit of a wash just to make sure you, you're, you're taking off any of, you know, potential debris or things that, that are not necessarily that you want in there. So give them a bit of a wash in the cold water, a bit of a rinse off, um, pat them down dry because we're not going to be peeling these pickles. We're going to be keeping the skin intact because, of course, lots of the goodness lives right beneath the skin. So wherever possible, we want to make sure that we keep the skin on our vegetables and especially our fruit as well. So those are our cucumbers. That's what we're going to be pickling today. And I had some um, little fabulous little uh, tray of goodies here that we'll actually be putting into our pickles as well. So I have some, just some garlic there. I also have some mustard seeds. I have a bit of, um, a bit of fennel seeds as well. Uh, this one here, I've got some coriander seeds, and um, I've also got a little bit of um, dried thyme. You can use fresh thyme, you could use rosemary, you could use dried rosemary. Oops, it really is up to you. You don't have to be exact on what I have here. This is going to help to flavor it, but if you go, oh no, I don't have any mustard seeds, then, then don't worry about it. Like seriously, do not worry about it. You can just leave something out. Or add something different but I'm going for these types of, of fragrance seeds because they are going to help to give our, our pickles a lovely little flavor so over here I've just got my little little hot plate I'm gonna put on a little frying pan just a little one it's actually a crepe pan <laughs> but it's I just wanted a small one I don't normally do anything but crepes in that pan but that's alright because all we're gonna be doing all we're going to be doing with this is I'm just going to be um, toasting off the little components that I have here. So the fennel, the mustard seeds, the coriander seeds. They're just going to be going into this dry frying pan. Now the reason I'm doing this, and this is um, this may seem like a, a kind of a pointless exercise, I suppose. But the reason I'm doing this, and remember no oil in here, just a dry frying pan. The reason I'm doing this is because what happens when we add heat to these types of spices as they begin to bloom is what we call it and blooming means that what we're doing is we're helping the flavor to really begin to expand in that product so we're extracting more flavor than if we were to put them in without doing that dry frying and that's all there is that's all I'm doing I'm not doing any more than that you see I've got a little bit of a haze coming off there which is good or oh, if you could smell What's happening now, it's incredible. The difference between having your dry fried spices, even if you're making a curry, I always like to add my spices into a dry frying pan and bloom them, as in flower bloom, B-L-O-O-M. And what we have here now is the most 
enticing and wonderful aromas that are coming off here. It's really pungent and you will not experience that if we were to just add them in without any, um, without any heat at all. So a bit of a dry fry. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to set that to the side. Now, if you guys have got any questions, by the way, any questions about what we're doing as we're going along, I've just been reminded by my lovely husband, who some of you have, have met online, Ma Hei is, um, is here to answer any questions. He is doing a bit of moderating. I can't really answer too many questions, only because they've set up the Facebook Live differently, and the, I can't even see the questions that are coming up now, Ma Hei. It's really weird. It's not, it's not very good. I'm not happy Facebook. I preferred the old version. But anyway, Mahi is here. If you've got any questions, please let us know. We're more than happy to answer any of your questions. So we've got our spices bloomed. Let's go on to the next step, taking myself up a pot. We need to make the liquid that is going into it. Now, I am using um, apple cider vinegar. I've got an organic apple cider vinegar, with, which is basically uh, with the mother, which means it's raw and it's unfiltered. So this is the best quality apple cider vinegar well, this isn't the best quality, not the best brand, but if you are looking to shop for your apple cider vinegar, what you want to do is make sure you get one with the mother. And what that base, the mother, you got to have the mummy in there. And basically what that means is it's raw and it's unfiltered, so it's got even more healing properties. And remember, apple cider vinegar is so very, very good for us. So if you can um, get one with the mother, please do. If you can't get one, just get apple cider vinegar, I think is the main thing. So I've just put my pot back on. I'm going to add more, give it a bit of a shake. So if, um, this we got, I got from Costco. You can buy two liters of um, organic apple cider vinegar with the mother at Costco. And it's about $10.99 for two liters. It's pretty fabulous. But then I got this one from Audi. I know for the Kiwis watching going, we don't have Costco yet and we don't have Audi. So this one at Audi is 500 mils for $3.99. Once again, it's organic. Um, apple cider vinegar with the mother which is good so it's wonderful for us we're going to put our apple cider vinegar into our pot we're just wanting it to heat up a little bit i'm also going to put in now in the recipe i said to put in um, the same amount of uh white vinegar now the only reason i did that is because i know for some people depending on where you are based this stuff is extremely expensive. So if you um, don't want to use, you know, nearly 500 mils of apple cider vinegar because it's so expensive, you can put um, a half white vinegar. Um, but I'm going to add just because, you know, Costco is awesome. I'm going to add, I'm going to go all apple cider. I'm not going to put any white vinegar into this one. I'm also going to be adding in some water. This is going to help to just dilate the uh, flavor a little bit otherwise it's just like oh my god i'm having vinegar and it's really really fun so that's why i'm putting the water in there i'm going to add in where is it i've lost it oh here it is i'm going to add in some salt i've got some himalayan salt in there i've got a couple of uh, teaspoons of himalayan salt this is going to make a really big jar by the way like a huge jar of pickles so now that that's coming to a, a bit of a simmer give it a bit of a stir all i want to do is dissolve the salt just trying to dissolve the salt in there. Let's go on to, or oh, I think I'll do the pickles in this jar today. I love choosing jars, it's always the fun part. All right, there's our, there's our little cucumbers in our jar. So, taking up your cucumbers, very, very simple thing to do. We're gonna knob off the ends, only because you don't really wanna eat that part, right? Just knob off the ends, they can go in the bin. And then it's up to you how you decide to slice your cucumbers. Now I'll show you one of those. Here's one I did earlier, just so you can see what I have here. Here's a jar I did earlier. This has been in my fridge now for a little bit, bit of time. Um, and you can see, you know, we've obviously the color difference is because now they've become quite pickled. You can slice them into rounds, 100%. If you wanted to, you could also do this type of thing. If you wanted them to be a little bit longer, is you go lengthways and then you cut them into almost like fingers, which is pretty cool. You can do that and then do that and kind of pile them into your jar. It's completely up to you. And I think the main way you're going to do your cucumbers is all going to be dependent on how you like to eat them. 
Now for me personally, because I put them you know, through my gut healing bowls or I have them um, through salads, I, I like the thinness of these. But if you really love pickles, then there is nothing stopping you from doing this type of this type of idea. And if you get really, really small cucumbers, you can also just wash the cucumber and put them in a hole as well, which is pretty cool. But this looks pretty awesome. So I'm gonna fill my jar up. Over here, this I wanna just, uh, has it, see it's not even boiling, which is good. You don't want it to boil. You want it to just come to a simmer, because remember all we're trying to do is dissolve the salt that we have put into there. So we're dissolving the salt. So slicing a few more, fill up your jar as much as you can. You can really pack them in there. And you know, depending on the size of your jar, you dip, and, and my recipe, like I said, makes one really large jar, you might actually get two jars. In fact, with the quantities in my recipe from, from, from the book, this will actually make two jars this size. So it's, it's, it's pretty decent. But it's up to you, like I was saying, when it comes to the shape of your pickles, it's completely up to you. But these do look kind of special, don't they? I mean, look at that. That's looking like you're pretty fancy, like you're a professional pickler. I wonder if that's actually a profession. I wouldn't mind being a professional pickler. <laughs> Someone was just saying um, that you can get uh, oh, apple cider vinegar from Pick and Save in New Zealand, which is great. So we've got our cucumbers in there, sliced, looking fabulous. They're all kind of about the same length because what I'm going to do then is uh, next is I'm going to pour the vinegar over them. So I want them, you know, if I had them all in different heights, maybe some of the cucumbers would not get covered in the vinegar. And it's really important that we cover our pickles in the vinegar. Oh, one word about the jar, I forgot to talk about this. Now, when it comes to your jars, um, because we eat these pickles pretty quick, I don't put them in the pantry and, and store them. These are what I call quick preserves or quick pickles. So these are ones that we keep in our fridge. So yes, the jar has to be scrupulously cleaned but don't panic that you have to sterilize them and boil them for 10 minutes in a pot of water or anything like that provided they are good clean jars remember they're going in the refrigerator and chances are you're going to eat these pretty quickly if you've got a jar of pickles in your fridge you're not going to be waiting in the pantry for you know months and months and months remember we're making quick pickles if you are making these to store because you've you've found you know cucumbers at you know, a dollar a kilo and you're going to go, I'm going to make pickles for everyone in the neighborhood. Definitely sterilize your jars. The best way to do that is, yes, in a big pot of boiling water, plunge these in for, no, sorry, put them into the pot, bring the pot to the, uh, to the boil, boil them for 10 minutes and then carefully take them out and allow them to dry without touching them, obviously, inside because we want them to be nice and sterilized. So that's our pickles. We're going to go back to our... Um, our bloomed spices, which are still smelling really good, and just spoon them in. You want to sort of get them as evenly spaced out down the jar as possible. So let's go in. At this point in time, I'm also going to add in um, my rosemary, sorry, my thyme. Remember, you can use rosemary, you can use fresh if you have access to them, but there's when it comes to rosemary and thyme, these are probably two of the only herbs that I don't mind using dry because the flavor is still really, really good. So I've got my, got my, my thyme in there. I'm also going to add in a little bit of garlic. I've just got two cloves of garlic that we're going to add into this one. I'm going to peel them first. That's the quickest way, if you're just peeling a couple at a time, literally the quickest way to do it is put your clove on your bench. See so you, your knife, that's the, that's the sharp bit, that's the flat end. So you put the flat end on top of your garlic and just with the palm of your hand, give it a bit of a smash and you can see that the skin just pops right off. Very, very easy. And what we're gonna do with our garlic is we just wanna slice them nice and thin to just take off the hard bit, if it's a bit of a hard end, get rid of that. And once again, the garlic is just gonna go through our pickles and give it a little bit of flavor. I remember my, my grandmother, my grandmother on my mum's side, she was just, because she likes it, she came from a farming background and her ability to pickle things was just 
phenomenal. I mean, she was an amazing cook, but her ability to pickle things were incredible. And and I think about all those wonderful preserves she always used to have around. It just used to be so such a wonderful um, occasion to visit her because she always had good food hanging around. And then there's my grandmother on my dad's side who was literally the pickle queen. She was amazing. She was amazing. And we still, like I say, we still miss her pickles. But kind of look at that. It looks cool, right? You like literally, you look like a professional pickler doing this. Now here's a suggestion. Rather than tipping the pot straight into there and making a bit of a mess because it's not a, a large opening I would suggest you just pour it into a jug with a uh, lip it's going to make it a lot easier to get into your jar so the idea with this here is what we want to do I still made a mess <laughs> I still dribbled oh gosh what you want to do is you want to cover the pickles or the cucumbers, they're not pickles yet, it's all cucumbers, you want to cover the cucumbers with the liquid. Now when it comes to cucumbers you only let like 24 hours and you are good to go. But this stuff is so good, I, I could literally start eating this and I probably will in about an hour because they're already going to be lovely and pickled. But they will last in your fridge once it's cooled down, because it's the liquid's a little bit warm once the liquid's cooled down. Put on a clean lid, pop it in the fridge, and this will, like, this, will, this will last you in your fridge for, you know, two or three months. Easy, easy, easy. So um, that is completely up to you, what you do with that one there. So that is from our Cook the Book, which is on page 218 of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. That is the first one that I want to show you guys. The first exciting one. And one that really, um, I was able to start, because, you know, okay, here we go. <laughs> so one of the things that I really noticed is that when you buy processed or pres preserves that you haven't made yourself, check out the label, have a little look at the label, and what you will probably find is that they um, it's got lots and lots of sugar. There's usually preservatives in there as, as well, which it doesn't need because the vinegar acts like a preservative. That's the whole idea about making preserves or pickles. Um, so you find that there's some stuff in there that just should not be in there. So I struggled, you know, with wanting to be gut healthy and then went, you know what, I'm just gonna make my own pickles because that's how easy it is to make and that's how quick it is to make as well. It doesn't take long, you just chop a few things up, heat up a bit of vinegar, throw it in, you got pickles. The hardest part now is you're gonna have to wait, well you don't have to, but you're gonna have to wait some time, 24 hours before you can eat them. But that's done, right? So um, once again, you know, when, when I started to realize, now oh, hang on Bridge, put on your chef's hat, you can actually work out how to make things that are not only going to be delicious and easy to make, but they're also going to be incredibly good for our gut health. And the next recipe that I'm going to show you guys is that in a nutshell and more. Because all we have in here, if you think about it, we have our wonderful apple cider vinegar, which is going to help to alkaline, alkalize our body, which is really, really important. We've got the goodness from the cucumbers in there as well. And then we've got those little bits of spices and flavors just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, a, of a different um, attitude when we go down to eat it, um, and which is wonderful. And then I went, I can take this one step further. And I did, and I need to show you what that looks like because it is literally super duper duper exciting when you're able to take something one step further, which is what we've done with the next recipe. Now the next recipe is not in my cookbook. It is in the next cookbook, which is more, as you know, from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So I'm gonna put that off to the side there because the next recipe I'm gonna show you guys, and it's one that if you've been following me, even if you've been only following me for a month or two, you will know that I use this a lot. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make my, and I call them delish pickled onions because they have literally saved my my palate, saved my palate's life with how incredibly wonderful they are to eat. They are so, 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 so good. If you like pickled onions, you are going to love this. If you're kind of fence sitting on pickled onions, give this a try. It could literally revolutionize the way you think about pickles. Right, so you've noticed that I'm holding up a red onion. That's really important. I like the red onions more than the white onions because they tend to be just that little bit sweeter. Just that little bit sweeter. Just a little bit. And they also are red. Well, they're kind of not really red, they're kind of purple, but they've got a funky color. So that is the before. And this is the after. This is what we're going for. 
And look, my jar's only half full. I'm, I'm getting, I get nervous when it gets this low. It's like when the petrol's low in your car, I'm like, oh, I better pull over. I'm like, oh, I better make some more pickled onions. So I have a, um, a wonderful dinner party here happening on Monday night with some amazing women from, from New Zealand and from Australia who are all on, the, we're all on the gut health journey together. We're having a dinner here. So I thought that's not enough pickled onions for us. So I'm making them. And so if you're coming to, um, if you're coming to dinner at my house on Monday, this is for you, right? This is what I'm making for you. So we are doing um, my pickled onions. So this is such a simple and easy recipe. I'm going to start with the vinegar rather than starting with the onions because it does not take long. It is literally bang and it's done. Okay, so bringing the camera down. Bringing the camera down. Here we go. So back to our pot. Pot's empty now. Turn on my little cooktop. It's really noisy, but it's awesome. But it's really noisy, but it's awesome. You know, it's one of those ones you're like, I don't know if I love you or you drive me insane because you're so noisy, but you're a portable induction cooktop, so I love you. Weird, I know, right? Okay, so we're back to our vinegar trick. So once again, we're going to go with our favorite, which is our organic um, apple cider vinegar with the mother. We're going to put that into our pot. And once again, we are not going for anything too dramatic here. Look at me, I'm going with the vinegar because I'm making lots of pickled onions. We're not doing anything too dramatic here, apart from putting in some vinegar. I might just turn it down a little bit, it's not going to take long. Putting in some vinegar and then putting in the other ingredient. And it looks like a big jar of icing sugar. <laughs> it's not icing sugar, of course it's not icing sugar. You know what's in here. A lot of you will be going, I know what that is. This is my inulin powder so what is inulin powder is like yes it looks like icing sugar or something else you know illegal but we won't talk about it this is a family show but with this is um icing no it's not icing sugar it's inulin powder so inulin powder is a dietary soluble dietary fiber and it is derived from it's a plant-based uh, fiber derived from chicory root my one and inulin powder is um wonderful as it firstly is it is a dietary fiber so it will increase the fiber content in your food so if you are wanting to stay regular if you're wanting to make sure that you're getting that fiber into your diet well hey mr inulin's really really good for that so that's the first thing is that inulin is a dietary fiber it is soluble water soluble so it will actually dissolve in my vinegar which is another great thing but the wonderful thing about inulin powder is it is a prebiotic so what that means is that a prebiotic feeds the probiotics that live down here in our, our gut and it helps to keep that area, well actually your gut's really long, your gut starts at your mouth and ends in your woo -woo, down the other end, um, it helps to keep the microflora in your, my husband's laughing behind me when I did the woo -woo, uh, helps to keep the microflora all healthy in your gut because your probiotics need something to feed on they feed on prebiotics so not only are we adding a soluble dietary fiber to our pickles we are also uh, making sure that we are adding a prebiotic to our pickles so it becomes a food that helps to keep the microflora in your gut wonderful and happy and plentiful so that's fantastic well, we've just got one question before we move on Nina asked, thank you Nina, what a great question. Nina asked whether we can reuse our pickle juice. 100% Nina, we can reuse this pickle juice. We can reuse this pickle juice as well. Any juice that you make, you can reuse. Now I've got one little um, important tip for you. If you are reusing your pickle juice, make sure that every time you dip into your jar, every time you dip into it or dip into your pickles or whatever it is you dip into it with clean utensils that will make sure that you're not um, negatively affecting this liquid in here so always go into it with clean utensils and if you do, can do that 100 percent you can reuse your pickle juice i like to add my this is my salad dressing that is in, in fact this is I, I if i could i'd eat i'll drink that that is the most amazing on its own put in a clean spoon spoon it over your salad that is amazing salad dressing so not only can you reuse it it makes pickles it's prebiotic it's um it's, it's got dietary fiber but you can also use it as a salad dressing how cool is that right it's like the gift that keeps on giving it's fabulous so um yes please use reuse your pickles just if you if you run out of here we go if you run out of pickled onions 
you could just add more onions to the pickles li liquid, right? Yay! I don't cool, right? Alright, but I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some brand new ones. So yes, our inulin powder, remember, soluble dietary fiber will increase the fiber content in your food. It is also gut healthy because it's a prebiotic and our gut need our probiotics need something to feed on. This is its food. But the wonderful thing about inulin powder is it tastes a little bit sweet. Not as sweet as sugar, definitely not as sweet as sugar, but it has a sweetness to it. So if we're able to do something like this, right, and add now our um, inulin powder to our apple cider vinegar to make our pickles, we are now thinking about flavor and we're balancing out the vinegar and the inulin. So on its own, vinegar is like, Wah! you know, it just literally makes your, it makes the sides of my, of my, of my um, tongue just kind of spark up whenever I think about straight apple cider vinegar. But when we start adding inulin powder, we then begin to balance out the sweetness with the sour. So that's what we've got in there. And um, from memory, it is 150 mils of um, apple cider vinegar to 80 grams of inulin powder. I've got, I've got more than 150 mils, so I'm adding a little bit more inulin into there. If you're wondering, where do I purchase inulin from? I have not yet seen it in the stores um, here in Australia. I have not even seen it in the stores in the States. I've been to like Whole Foods and stuff in the States, no one's selling it there. If you're struggling to find inulin powder, I would definitely suggest that you look online. So just Google inulin powder and it'll show you where you can purchase it. And I buy all mine online. I'm based in Australia, so I buy mine via eBay, would you believe? I usually get two kilos at a time, which is definitely the cheapest way to do it. So our inulin goes in there. I haven't brought our liquid to the boil. It's still on that wonderful simmer. And all we're doing once again is we're just wanting to dissolve the inulin powder. So I'm not bringing it to the boil. Have a bit of a taste. Oh wow, it's really good. It's lovely in balance. It's exciting. It is exciting. I didn't even measure that. It was a guess. Tastes pretty good. All right. So we're doing pickled onions once again. We go back to our our lovely clean jar. I'll turn that off because that is dissolved already. Taking up our come back this way a little bit. Taking up our uh, our onions. I have pre-peeled them. The reason I've pre-peeled them is if I didn't, I would stand here and cry in front of all of you because I have got super, super sensitive eyes and me and onions are not friends. Not, we're not friends. I may cry. I may keep the video down this way from now on because I may, I may just tear up a little bit, but it's okay. So onions, up to you once again how you cut your onions. You can do thin rounds like that, especially if the onion's quite small. I think it's nice to have rounds. They look really, really pretty, you know, when they go uh, into, onto a salad and stuff. But, you know, just for ease of cutting, I always like to cut my onion in half so I've got a lovely firm surface to work from. And then just, we're just gonna go through and cut them. Just like that, you probably don't wanna have that little root in there. I'm gonna get rid of that root. But it's up to you, as long as the onions are, are pretty much the same thickness all throughout. Doesn't matter how you're cutting them, provided you've got the same thickness, you won't have to worry um, about what sort of size. Because you know, once they go into the jar, they all kind of look pretty similar, don't they? So I'm gonna take this, this big gola here. So remember, take off, the, take off the root. Now I've got the, sorry, that's the root there. Take off the top bit. The root is still intact. I will cut straight down through the root. So it's still intact. Then I'm turning the onion over so I've got a nice firm surface to work with there. So it's, this, is, this is for safety as well. And then I'm just gonna cut through into half rounds or moons or crescents or whatever you wanna call it. You can also do this on a mandolin. If you have a mandolin, there's nothing stopping you from using a mandolin. But you know, the cho once again, the choice is yours. It's one of the things I love about uh, these, this type of eating is that you, know, you can actually play around a little bit with it. So right now, I'm just making straight pickles, right? Straight pickles using red onions. Oh, I can feel the tears, they're starting to well. Oh, it's gonna be fun. Ooh, that must have been quite a um, full on onion. Um, so one of, the, yes, one of the great things I do, I have to uh, recompose uh, myself. 
Uh, one of the great things about pickles is that you can play around. Remember when it comes to the pickled cucumbers, you can add different spices, you can leave mustard seeds in or out, you can add different herbs, fresh or dried, all that sort of stuff is completely up to you. And it's kind of similar when it comes to my pickled onions too, is that you could use white onions if you wanted to. Um, if you're in Hawaii, you could use those wonderful sweet Maui onions. They're pretty fabulous. You can totally use those. Completely up to you. And if you wanted to at this point in time, you could add in some garlic, like I chopped in some garlic. You could add in some ginger, which would be really amazing. Or you could even add in a couple of chilies. If you like it a little bit spicy, there is nothing stopping you from adding in your chilies too. So, you know, go crazy and just make it how you want to eat it. Like I am a bit of a, you know, pickled onion purist, um, you might say. And I do like to just have the pickled onions on their own. And I'll show you why in a second. I have the um, ability to be a bit of a pickled onion purist. That that goes in. Last onion. Haven't had to. I'm sniffing a little bit. That's not too bad. Right, onions are in. So remember the next stage. We've got our onions in there. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? That wasn't too hard at all. I'm now going to pour my liquid into my jug. Sorry, nose is nose is running. <laughs> Just a little bit. See, no, it's just, we've just got a simmer on this. So we've got a little bit of steam coming off there, but nothing more than that. And then we're going to go straight into our jug. I'm going to make a mess. Oh, God, look at that. I'm wasting it. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh. oh here we go. We're going to cover our onions. Just like that. Now, what you may notice in here is that some of the onions aren't quite covered. That's fine, because what's going to happen is as the um, onions begin to soften with that, with the pickle, um, the pickling liquid, you're going to be able to push them down. So leave the lid off for a while, because come back to it in, you know, sort of 10 to 15 minutes, and you're actually going to be able to push and compress those onions down. But that is it. That is the pickled onions done. Remember, that recipe is going to be in my... Um, in my new book, More from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, along with another pickled recipe that I'm going to show you. Let's give my bench a bit of a, a bit of a clean. I've got vinegar everywhere now, which is not the greatest thing. And and now I'm looking for a tissue. My hey, have you got a tissue over there? I just just yeah, got a little bit of a a little bit of an onion issue just under the flowers. Yeah, just under the flowers. Thank you. A little bit of an onion issue. But the reason um, I'm I'm not put, I, I normally just go with. My pickled onions is because, thank you, is because as well as that, I also tend to have other pickles in my fridge. And this recipe here, this is my pickled ginger. Now, if you like the pickled ginger that is on the side of, um, usually on the side of your sushi or your sashimi, you can now make your own. Because that stuff that's usually on the side of your sushi and your sashimi is so completely covered in sugar and preservatives, like stuff that shouldn't be in there. I mean, for a start, it's vibrant pink, whereas this is what your pickled ginger should look like. So when it comes to the pickled ginger, you take up your ginger root, just like this, you um, very carefully peel it, and I actually use a one of these peelers to peel it, just very carefully, very slowly, you do have to peel this one. And then, rather than using a knife for this, I'll show you what I use to cut it, because you, you really want to get very thin slices of your pickled ginger, because it is, after all, ginger, and that's got a pretty big flavor. So you want something that's kind of paper thin, right? That's wafer thin, a little bit of pickled ginger. Because you want that, the best way to do it, I'll show you what I use. Where is it? I use my mandolin with a guard and I just take the ginger and I just grate it down there to get those paper, paper thin slices, which is what you want. Now the liquid for our pickled ginger is slightly different from the, um, from the liquid from our pickled onion, slightly different. And in fact, I don't put any um, inulin in this. With the liquid from the pickled ginger, I actually put fiber syrup in it. So I use about 200 mils of apple cider vinegar, 50 mils of fiber syrup. Now, once again, if you're wondering what fiber syrup is, fiber syrup is a um, prebiotic fiber syrup. So once again, it's really, really good for our gut health. And it's kind of your alternative to honey and maple syrup. So fiber syrup, I have not seen in the shops as well. I buy mine online. Once again, Google fiber syrup and I know that New Zealand sells it through is it naturally good is there a website called naturally good I think they do the fiber syrup and the inulin in Australia you can get it through Sirkin 
S-U-R-K-I-N, do the fiber syrup. So it's 200 mils of liquid, which kind of fills up my jar there, or half, almost fills up my jar. 50 mils of fiber syrup goes into there, and once again, we heat it up, just so it simmers, slice the ginger nice and thin, it goes into our jar, pour the liquid over, and you have the most amazing, amazing pickled ginger. Like, this stuff is... It's it's nuts. It is absolutely nuts. So that's what that one is there. But I'm going to show you some of the other pickles that I have. The other pickles that I have. Because it's um, pretty exciting. So I don't spend much time making pickles. Remember that. That's the important thing. I don't spend much time. But what I, what I am returned with when it comes to these pickles is just the most wonderful jars of goodies everywhere. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna line them up and then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing afterwards. So I've got my cucumbers, which you know. You've seen that being done. We've got our pickled onions, which are just, yay, exciting. These are my old pickled onions. There's, there's my old jar. As well as that, you guys have seen my pickled ginger. Pickled ginger's gonna go there. These are another way of slicing your cucumbers. Remember, you can slice them lengthways or you can slice them like little rounds as well. Nothing wrong with that. So we've got our, we've got our cucumbers there. And then in here, ah, this is my homemade kimchi. So um, if you like kimchi, you're gonna love this. And I call it quick kimchi. And yes, this kimchi recipe is in my next book, More From Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. It's in my next book. So I also, I wanna show you, this is so, this is so amazing. I love it so much. Can you guys see that? There is my kimchi. So kimchi is your fermented cabbage. Um, no vinegar in here actually, just salt and cabbage and I do make my own little special Korean chili paste so um, this one is more for people I would suggest if you're in maintenance or you've you've kind of achieved your your weight loss goals or your health goals kimchi is one that you want to um, not to have too much off because chili and there is a bit of Korean chili in there it, it can inflame the gut so just go carefully with your kimchi it does last for a very long time and I know that people are talking about it being really really gut healthy because of the fermentation but it's the chili side for certain people not for everyone but for some people it may inflame the gut so you need to go carefully with this one I'm pretty good with small amounts this for me is on the side of meats you know whether they're my Korean style sticky beef or whether you're putting them with a roast beef or going through a salad or with eggs or anything you could possibly imagine this makes it amazing so that's my kimchi and I've got one more very special one that I want to end the broadcast off with today and don't forget guys we're almost to the end so if you've got any questions jump in and let me know your questions now um, we've still got Mahe sort of online doing his thing. He's doing lots of other things, as he always is, but he's also keeping an eye on, on the questions. So in this jar here, I'm just going to give it a little, it's a little bit damp because it came out of the fridge. In this jar here, I know it doesn't look very fabulous, but this is my pickled vegetables. So, oh, we've got a question, yes. Mia just asked, so just sauerkraut would be better than kimchi? Yeah, sauerkraut would be better than kimchi if you are um, someone who doesn't handle chili well. Sauerkraut's fantastic. And you can absolutely make um, kimchi without chili as well. You can make a, a, a non-chili version, so um, you can do that too. Because the, 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 the little you know, things that we have in this kimchi is pretty similar to sauerkraut, except we add in the Korean um, peppers or the chili peppers or the chili paste that I make. So you can do that or you can go straight sauerkraut. Great, great question. All right, so in this jar here of my pickled vegetables. Now these pickled vegetables are a nod and um, uh, a nod to my, my grandma, my grandma, Nan Nanny Medi, who was, I was telling you guys was like this famous pickle maker from the North, uh, North Island. And um, she used to make the most amazing pickled vegetables um, and so I recently discovered I had a copy a handwritten copy of her recipe in one of my files one of my my cooking files and I thought you know what I'm going to make my nanny Mary's famous pickles um, but I'm, I'm just going to take out some of the things that we don't want in there like the sugar and stuff like that and so what I have here is um, this is my second jar I already ate the first one <laughs> This is my second jar of my Nanny Medi's pickles. And as I was saying to you guys, these vegetable pickles are so amazing. And they go really, ooh, yay. 
They go really, really well um, with curries and on the sides of meats, of course, through salads. And it doesn't matter what type of vegetables that you put in here. So at the moment, I have cauliflower. I also, you can see zucchini in there. I actually threw in some cucumber too, if I remember rightly. You know, just because I got some cucumber in there. Um, you can put broccoli in here. You can put cabbage in here. You can put onions. Anything you want can go into your pickles. Now, I am going to share the recipe. And you can see the reason why it's that color is because it's very typical of piccalilli. It's got a curry base to it. Curry and fresh turmeric. And we all know how good turmeric is for us. So this is my nanny's pickles. This is my my hat tip to my nanny's beautiful amazing pickles but we've gone with the healthy sugar-free um, gluten-free version of my nanny's pickles making pickled vegetables and literally this for me is life so i'm going to share this recipe with you guys on bridget's kitchen um, tomorrow morning it's going to go live my nanny's pickles so keep an eye out for that and now i'm going to bring the there was actually one more jar of pickles i had i've got pickled lemons but i don't even know where that is but that doesn't matter because i'm going to show you guys this this is what my fridge looks like <laughs> at all times this is my fridge this means I have deliciousness waiting for me every single second of the day I can make something wonderfully delicious with all these gorgeous gorgeous pickles you've seen how easy they are to make they're not hard at all and if you just start off with the basics like just start off with the cucumbers yeah give this one a go fantastic move on up to the pickled onions, which is oh, fabulous, fabulous. And then we've got the ginger, the pickled vegetables. This is, oh my God, I love this so much. And then of course the kimchi or a sauerkraut. You have fabulousness just waiting for you at any time of the day. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, I want to say apologies again for being a little bit sort of vague or, you know, not so visible the last couple of weeks, but it was well worth it because that book, I'm so excited to get the next book to you guys. It is looking amazing. If you love the first book, you're going to love the second book. So thank you for watching guys. I will be doing lots more of these videos now that that book is ready to rock and roll. We'll talk to you soon. If you've got any questions, let us know. Keep an eye out for that pickled vegetable recipe tomorrow on Bridget's Kitchen and we'll talk to you soon. Carolee, we'll see you tomorrow as well. All right guys, take care.